That's a cool intro with the triangle and all. Hmm, just want to say that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday night or Thursday morning or Wednesday afternoon or any time of the week, depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching this in replay. But tonight we're going to do a choose your own adventure kitchen renovation guide. I'll explain what that means in a minute. But first, I just want to point out, Terry Joe Scott, you are the first commenter of the evening. So your comment, your chat is pinned to the top of the feed. Congratulations. <laughs> That's the only prize you get is that you're pinned to the top of the feed. And I'd like to say hi to Jackie, because Jackie, I forgot to thank you last week uh, just for being my moderator. And if anyone's wondering, how come Jackie has a wrench next to her name? in the chat feed. It's because she's a moderator, so she can whip you into shape, keep you in line, and boot at anybody who needs to go. And I forgot to say thank you. So um, my apologies, but I really do appreciate it. So thanks, Jackie. And uh, yeah, the triangle, it was there. It was late. I don't know what happened. Just maybe my connection. I'm not sure. So I hope everyone's having a great uh, day, a great week. And uh, it's very nice and sunny, a little bit of rain, a little bit of sun here where I'm at. But overall, everything's really, really nice. Enjoying the summer and um, sipping some coffee tonight. We're going to get into the content in a minute, but I just want to take a minute to say hi. And if you are, uh, you know, on a screen where you can't use your thumbs or keyboard to to say hello, just wave at the screen or just know that I appreciate you being on regardless of whether or not you can interact with the chat. And if you are able to chat, make sure you drop a hello at least in there or a question and um, we can uh, we can answer some questions if, if you need to. But make sure you say hi, at least, and maybe where you're watching from. And you know the drill. If you're new. If you're not new, welcome back. So, um, what happened, Barbara? Your thing's held for review. I don't know. Jackie can take care of that. <laughs> Hit the like button early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof, I'll from the Australian winter. Oh no. Everyone's jumping on. Thanks for, thanks for uh, saying hi. Everyone's saying hi and I appreciate it. So I love the fact that we can join from all over the place. Oh, Barbara, I get it. You got green, a green dot. Does that mean the color kitchen? I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm going to take a sip of coffee and then we'll get into this. If you um, caught last week's Oh, yeah, and I'm streaming on Facebook. So if you're watching from Facebook, the Facebook, thanks very much for jumping on there. And you can join in the chat as well from Facebook. And that's uh, that's really cool. But last week, I uh, we had Nick Lewis on, which uh, was really great. If you had a chance to watch it, uh, really cool, really great live stream. Uh, we had a blast. Super, super uh, generous with his time, uh, Nick was. And not, not only during the live stream, but earlier in the day, uh, we had almost a two-hour chat on Zoom or Google Meets or whatever. And um, and then, you know, it was, it was his idea to come on the live stream. I didn't even ask him. Um, so that was super generous. I really do appreciate that from him. If you didn't get a chance to watch that live stream or if it didn't show up in your feed or you didn't have time because it was kind of a long one, I'm going to try. I'll either going to add some chapters to it to make it a little easier to navigate or I might uh, condense it down and edit it and just release it as a video. But it's just a really great conversation, and it's a long one, so, you know, obviously you need to have the time to do that. So, you know, I appreciate if you even watch for a minute. So, um, but yeah, so that, that that's a really that was a really fun time. And uh, so hopefully you can check that out uh, with Nick. And, of course, if, if you're not familiar with Nick, go check out uh, Nick Lewis on YouTube, uh, interior design content, really good. He's kind of my go-to when it comes to interior design because I'm trying to learn, and I want to learn from – I want to learn from him. So that's, I guess, the best way to say that because I like just, I like the way he does stuff. Uh, and and we both have the same book. Um, I found out he had this book. And uh, so I was pretty stoked that I had it as well. You know, I'm on the right track, which is always good. All right, let's jump into the content. But before we do, I see a question. I have a friend who's redoing his kitchen. He had lots of questions about lights under upper cabinets. I told him I thought... They were super helpful. Do you have any thoughts about them? Yeah, they're definitely super helpful. Any lights anywhere in the kitchen, I think, can be super helpful because the worst that like you just turn them off if you don't need them. But if they're not there in the first place, you, you can't use them even if you do need them. Under cabinet lighting, definitely the way to go. And you can get lots of great under cabinet lighting now 
from all kinds of places. You know, I mean, anywhere they sell lights, you can get under cabinet lighting and they have LED ones and they have ones that are dimmable and, you know, you name it, uh, all different range of prices and, and of course, quality, but definitely uh, something that is super helpful. You're right to have under cabinet lighting um, up underneath your, your, your cabinets, just to give you task lighting for when you're doing something in the kitchen on that countertop. And even if you're not doing something on the countertop, they, they're just good to have anyway. You can turn them on for ambient lighting in your kitchen and whatnot. So uh, great question. Definitely a thumbs up from, from me as far as under cabinet lighting goes and just lighting everywhere. And uh, that's something uh, Nick and I chatted about last week as well with some under cabinet lighting or lighting in the kitchen. And so you can check that out. Um, yeah. So, oh, and I got a poll going on. So, hey, listen, if the kitchen is the social hub of your house, uh, there's a true and false question, basically. So true, it's party central, kitchen party central, or just stay out of my kitchen. So we're just trying to get a feel for how do you use your kitchen in our home because the kitchen is open to basically the entire living space. It all becomes one uh, you know, one social hub, I guess, is the way to say that. But uh, many people maybe have a kitchen that's closed off or separate it in some other way. And uh, you don't, you, you know, people don't gather in there. But I find at least if, where I'm from, the kitchen is definitely a real social place and a, and a social gathering spot. That and like the, the porch, you know, like the, the, the place where you're, you're putting on your shoes and you're putting your coat on, you're about to leave. But you, but you have like an hour long conversation as you're about to go out the door. So there's the two places normally that uh, people gather. So right on. Um, all right. Lots of lots happening in the chat and I'll try to get to a whole bunch of them in a little while. So keep uh, putting them in there. Um, if you uh, want to answer someone's question, by all means, go for it. Um, that's that's super fine. And of course, we all know, you know, we want to keep it respectful and uh, we're all joking around. But uh, Jackie's there to, you know, bring on the to bring the thunder if anything gets out of line. <laughs> <laughs> cool cool um so what do i mean by choose your own adventure let me just show you this so this was a an, an article or a web website i guess from uh, architectural design or i'm sorry architectural digest um and i did a video i, I used them for a couple of videos in the past few weeks one about celebrity kitchens and one where i, I redesigned a kitchen from last week and so i got on their website and they have this, uh, this well, page that's just talking about kitchen renovation guides. And so there, there's all these different uh, tabs you can click. Okay, what to ask your contractor before starting a kitchen remodel. Uh, design Designer Steve Gambrell's eight favorite kitchen designs. I don't know who that is, but that sounds interesting. Um, what's this one? How to design your kitchen like a star chef. Uh, five tips to make your small kitchen feel large. They go on and on. Six clever kitchen design ideas from St. Charles of New York. Interesting. What's this one? Uh, how to make the most of a small kitchen. And 10 questions to ask yourself before a kitchen remodel. So lots of different ones. I didn't look at any of them. I thought we'll just dive into one of these or maybe multiple and uh, we can go through them together. How do you like the sound of that? So that's what we're going to try to do right now. And hopefully this will work out fine. And I guess... The best way to do this is, let's say, let's do this. So just so you can have a part to play in this as we're going through. Um, let me just scroll up. Sorry, I don't want to cause anybody a headache here. I'll try to scroll. Okay. So the first one is what to ask your contractor before starting a kitchen. We'll do this in, in group of three. What to, st what to ask your contractor before starting a kitchen. That's one. Number two is designer Steve Gambrell's eight favorite kitchens. That's number two. Okay, you got to listen up because you got to vote here in a second. And, uh, and we'll go with one. And how to design your kitchen like a chef is number three. Okay, so number one, what to ask your contractor. Number two, Steve Gambrell's eight favorite kitchen designs. And number three, how to design your kitchen uh, like a star chef. Not just a chef, but a star chef. So... Put it in the comments, one, two, or three. One, two, or three. We get a couple of each. We'll go with it. I see, I see like one is winning already. So we got three. <laughs> Chat. Okay. One, one seems to be winning. All right. Let's do number one. What to ask your contractor before starting a kitchen. I 
I haven't looked at any of these. So hopefully this is uh, hopefully these are good and this isn't a flop. You ready? Here we go. What to ask your contractor before and and then we can see not only we can like kind of see, do we agree? Or maybe there's other questions that we can ask our contractors. All right. Million dollar contractor, Steve Fanuka tells AD the crucial questions to ask before a kitchen makeover. Okay. Well, he probably knows what he's talking about. I'm not going to read everything. We'll just go to the main questions. Are you licensed and insured? Number Question number one to ask your contractor, are you licensed and insured? Con Contact your state consumer affairs department or local government provincial authorities to check if the contractor you're considered is properly licensed. Yeah, you don't want to end up with a taillight warranty so that once they leave the job site, you know, you'll never get a hold of them again. And hiring contractors is tricky business. I know I know a lot of contractors and I'm friends with a lot of contractors, really great contractors. Um, but I've worked in this industry long enough to know that there are some real pieces of work out there, unfortunately. And um, I remember having to deal with them in the store that I worked in. And it's like, uh, you know, I, I just wish I didn't, I didn't wish them upon anybody. <laughs> I never would recommend those people, uh, but they're out there. But I will say the majority of contractors that I know are super great. So hopefully the bad ones don't taint the good ones. All right, but that's a good question. Are you licensed and insured? Insurance is probably a good one too, right? Well, that's what it says, but additionally insured. All right, the next one is, can you draw up a detailed proposal uh, and an American Institute of Architects contract? Okay, I'm not, I'm, I'm in Cana Canada. I'm in Canada here, so I don't know what that is, but a detailed proposal. Yeah, you, that's obviously a really good one. You want to make sure that, you get an itemized list of materials and labor to the best that they can. There's always going to be hiccups. There's always going to be things that come up in a job that you just didn't know about or weren't aware about or didn't, you know, can't foresee. And that's going to happen. But at least have some kind of itemized detailed list that you can go over um, so that you can approve and that you're in the loop of what's happening and where the money's being spent. Because that can get out of hand really quickly. And anybody here who's done... Um, any kind of renovations understands that this can go right out the window real fast. So, so that's a good one. Make sure that you have uh, some, some de a detailed proposal. And when it comes to kitchen design specifically, and I, I'm sure they'll get into more kitchen related things here in a minute. Uh, you know, you want to make sure that you, you have um, not only, not only a proposal, but, but like renderings and, and design and all that kind of stuff nailed down to see uh, to see those things as well. Next is, who are the subcontractors you'll be working with? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I guess that's important. Get a list of everyone involved in the kitchen renovation, such as the carpenters, the cabinet installers, painters, the floor technicians. All right. Oh, they should all be under work and compensation, liability insurance. Yeah, I would, I mean, I don't know if I'd be asking that personally. I If I'm hiring you, I'm going to just probably trust that you have all that figured out because you're insured then that it would all fall under the contractor. I don't know. What's your, what's your thought about that? Is that something that's important to know? Like if I hire a contractor and you're the contractor and you come into my home, you're going to do my kitchen renovation. I, I don't, I mean, do I need to know who the plumber is? I don't know. Like you deal with that. I'm hiring you to do it so that I don't have to do it. So anyway, that's just my thought, but I could be wrong. What's oh okay? What's your input on the kitchen design? Ask your contractor for his opinion, <laughs> and stay away from the ones who say nothing and are in a rush to leave. <laughs> Typically, your contractor and interior designer will take shopping trips to look at slab stones, appliances, light fixtures, lights and fixtures. Um, request that you come along. If they're experienced and they're in the industry, this can be really uh, something that you'd find useful. If you have a, an interior designer or a kitchen designer and a contractor, like those people would work together. And I've worked with contractors and interior designers over the years to, to bring a project to fruition. fruition. Um, and oftentimes the contractor will have ideas that maybe you didn't think about, you know, as a kitchen designer. Um, and oftentimes, 
the kitchen designer would have ideas that the contractor wouldn't think about. And of course, that all has to be filtered through the homeowner and the person who's paying the bill. So I guess the most, the more information, the better. Um, and, and I say that's, uh, that's always sound advice. The more ideas, the better. The more things that you know that you definitely don't want um, helps you figure out what you definitely do want. So there's nothing wrong with that. Number five, do you have any shopping discounts? <laughs> Oh, do you have any shopping discounts? Most contractors and interior designers get 10% trade discounts on appliances. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, if you do buy your own kitchen devices, see if the contractor will pick them up and deliver them. Curbside, no extra fee. Most contractors do get discounts at home, like home improvement centers, like home hardware or other local, um, provincial or statewide um hardware stores lumber yards and yeah, lumber yards and stuff and um i guess it's i don't know i i would assume that that discount doesn't get passed on to you <laughs> i don't know but that's a good question to ask do you get a discount um and can i get in on it how often will we meet to check in on the renovation the more you stop by your home the better uh, if the contractor sees you often, they'll more likely stay on the job versus jumping back and forth. Well, maybe. I don't know if that's really true. Uh, but plan to visit at least once a week. I would say that if you're doing a big renovation or big kitchen renovation, you can't help yourself but to be there at least once a week because it's it's really exciting and you want to see the progress. And uh, so that's always really exciting to, uh, to do. So I would say... Uh, yeah. How often do you want to meet? Interesting. I've never thought to ask some of these. Number seven, what's the best way for us to communicate? Find out if your contractor prefers email or phone. It's interesting. That's a good one. Nothing worse than trying to get a hold of your contractor. You're calling them and you just nothing. You don't get anything. Or you're texting them and they're ghosting you completely. So that's a good one. Just to, they understand. You understand. I'm going to be calling and I want to know what's the best way so that I get a response, so that I'm not waiting, getting angry for a question that I'm going to ask you 500 times over the course of a week. So make sure you know how to communicate. Uh, is there more? There should be more. There's only seven. I thought there were nine. All right. Well, those were the, the, the those were that was it. Okay. Let's go to the let's go to another one. Let's go back. I see someone someone had said number three uh, back up here in the list few people are saying number three so let's go to number three oh, what's this now hold on oh you'll get four free gifts if you subscribe today that sounds awesome you can do that on your own time i'm not going to do it uh here we go here how to design a, your kitchen like a star chef all right let's do it then i'll jump in the comments and, and we'll uh we'll go there stephanie gatto who has created the home kitchens of Caesar Casella and Daniel Bolud, I don't know, offers her expert tips for your next renovation. If if you happen to be those two people, I'm sorry that I butchered your name. All right. Star Chef. Here we go. Here we go. Well, that's beautiful. That's pretty. Place the sink first. Oh, they must have been watching Mark Tobin Kitchen Design because I would agree uh, you should place the sink first because... Um, in any kitchen, you want to think about, I always think about the sink. And if there's corners, I plan out from there. Um, I think about appliances and then I go to all the other things. But the sink would be the first cabinet that I place in a kitchen renovation uh, when I'm like personally just designing it myself and, and doing that. So that's, I think it, where am I at here? Hold on, people. Um, that's really sound advice. Place the sink first. So I, I think that's good. Next is... Make the most out of your kitchen island. Okay. Uh, okay, yes. I don't know what I can. <laughs> All right. So far, this isn't ha this has nothing to do with being a chef uh, so far. I would say this is good advice overall. If you have an island, then you should make the most of this. That's good. That's good advice right there. Make the most of your kitchen island. I prefer to have just an, a kitchen island that's one... Um, uncluttered, 
you know, countertop. That's my favorite. And, um, you know, having a sink in it, it can be okay. Not my favorite. I know I just designed a kitchen that had a sink in the island. And sometimes it's a good choice. And I did that for a reason. But generally, if I had the choice myself, I would probably just want one big counter space. And I know for us here in our home, and if you have kids, you understand this as well. And if you've ever packed lunches for kids for school, then, you know, you, the more counter space, the better to try to sort through all that or just about anything that you do in the kitchen. That's just, uh, you know, one of the things that that islands are very good for. But there's also good for just everything that you do. And I can't uh, agree more. Make the most of your island. Make sure you have lots of storage in there, drawers, all that good stuff. Seating's fine as well. Choose hard wearing surfaces. Yeah, and I'd say this would go for every homeowner out there. Make sure that your countertop is durable, as durable as you need it to be. And there's lots of great choices out there. And we talk about a lot of them before on the live stream. I talk about them in my videos. And there's lots of conversation about what's the best one to pick. But make sure you get something that's durable, especially if you're going to be using it a lot. You know, I mean, and what I mean by that is you're 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 using it... Um, like you're in the kitchen a lot, you do a lot of cooking, you do a lot of baking, and it gets a lot of wear and tear. So you want to use something that's that's durable. Sound advice. I mean, you know, don't choose a, a surface that's not going to wear. <laughs> like, obviously, obviously choose hard wearing surface. Okay, let's go to the next one. Put utilitarian appliances with refined cabinetry oh interesting interesting i just mentioned this in the video that i'm going to put out this weekend um that's cool put utilitarian appliances with refined cabinetry cabinetry so i mean what what this is saying i think what they mean by this is uh paneling your appliances i mean the the, the appliances that are that are for utility like your fridge you can put a panel on it and make it blend in with your cabinets or your dishwasher, which is utility. I mean, all the appliances are utility, but you just, you can't put a, a panel over your range unless you have one of those uh, invisible induction ranges that's built into a countertop. Um, so there's a way to hide all those things. So that's what this, um, this thing is saying, I believe. I mean, I'm not reading it, so they could be saying something else, but utilitarian appliances. All right. Interesting. Who's this guy? Opt for invisible hardware. If you're running around the kitchen, you don't want to get hooked on a belt. Your belt, you don't want your belt loop to get hooked on a knob or a handle. Um, handleless kitchens are pretty popular nowadays. I still like having a handle. I like something I can just grab hold of, and um, instead of having like a built-in seamless handle. But um, that's just my own personal preference. But I guess if you're a star chef, uh, an invisible handle uh, would be the way to go. Or invisible hardware. So I'm, I'm assuming they don't mean hinges because that's pretty much, you know, the, the standard now is, is to have European style hinges um, on everything. But that's a good one. So I don't know if I agree with that or disagree. But if I'm not a star chef, so I don't know. But apparently that's what star chefs want. Use concealed storage. Concealed storage. Uh, yeah, I mean, isn't all cabinetry concealed storage? I mean, I think so. Um, so, yeah, I guess what they mean is don't use open shelving or don't have anything like that. So, obviously, all the stuff is concealed. Open the door and the stuff's in there. But that's 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 like just a cabinet, so I don't know, I don't know what that's all about. All right, I wasn't blown away by this article. AD, what's going on? Let's go to the let's go to the next one. Let's go to the one that about Steve Gambrel. How about that? Whoever that is. If you know who Steve Gambrel is, comment. Let's do this one and just to see if it's any better. And then we'll keep going from there. All right. There's a lot to learn from this AD 100 talents stunning kitchen renovation projects. Well, I hope so. Here we go. Gambrel Sag Harbor, New York getaway. Oh, these are just pictures. Okay. Look at that sink. Wow. I like that sink. That's kind of cool. Different. 
not everyone's cup of tea, this kitchen. Uh, it's a huge plant in the middle there. <laughs> I don't know. It's not my favorite design. I don't like the placement of the oven, the range. Let's go to the next one. All right, Gambrel. Let's see. Wow, this is uh, ornate. Very cool. What's this one called? The Luxurious Duplex in Manhattan's Meatpacking District. <laughs> what? Where's the Meatpacking District? That is a really beautiful range. Where do you live, son? I live in the Meatpacking District. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> beautiful range hood. Lovely white cabinets. Big island with seating. I like that one, Gambrel. You you done good there. Let's go to the next one. I'm gonna jump into the comments in a minute. Ooh, pretty. Redcraft, the 19th century Southampton estate. Well, hello. Let's see what this one's all about. Not a lot of countertop by the range, though it's it's like a 48 inch or bigger range over there, gas range stove. Well, that's very nice. Some open shelves. Mm, beautiful. I mean, I'd take any of these kitchens, to be honest with you. Like, you know. Whoa. This one looks fancy. Another nice big range and beautiful range hood. Beautiful tiles. What's this called? The revitalized 1930s mansion in Old Westbury, New York. I'm from Old Westbury. I'm from the meatpacking district. I have a beautiful countertop. That's really nice. Kind of maybe it's marble. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's something else. Oh, there's a pot filler. I got a pot filler going on. Hope everyone's doing okay. I haven't even been into the chat here at all. Let's keep going. Beautiful, beautiful. A little too much red on the floor for me, but hey, I'm not living there. I don't live in a revitalized mansion. Oh, here we go. What's this one? The Bridgehampton Beach House. Oh, cool. Just a little a little kitchen. Some open shelving. I like the sound of a beach house. Lots of open shelving. Those top ones you can't reach. They'd be difficult to clean. And, uh, yeah, a little sink there. A little, little fridge. Nice, nice, nice. Ooh, what's this? This is fancy. Oh, the Industrial Manhattan Loft. Wow. There's a lot of opaque looking glass. Is that what that is? Big waterfall edge on the countertop. Some, looks like porcelain or some kind of stone. Lots of glass. Beautiful. I mean, these, these aren't all my cup of tea, but they're all nice. Oh, there's a big cow head. Wow. What's that on the back wall? The classic house in Zurich. That looks cool. Big, big high ceiling. Wow. Really nice. Is that like wood in that fridge? What is in that fridge? Looks like looks like kindling. <laughs> I don't know what those appliances are on the back walls. Anybody know what they are? I don't have no idea. All right, let's go to the next one. 1912 Upper East Side Apartment. Is that you, Zoe? Nineteen twelve Upper East Side Apartment. Wow, that's pretty. I'm not a fan of the black and white floor, but I mean it's really nice. Beautiful cabinetry, high gloss, black, stainless steel countertops, big, big range. You notice a lot of these kitchens have this huge, <laughs> it's coming. I, it's, I ordered it from uh, Etsy, <laughs> big cow head. I want like a, a bull skull, that'd be cool. Uh, 1912, yeah, that's really neat. Well, you know. Gambrel did pretty good. He did print some. What I like about all these is they're they're so different, you know. And that's the that's the cool thing about uh, design. There's no cookie cutter kitchen. There's no one size fits all. Every kitchen is unique. Every kitchen is different, and it depends on the homeowner and depends on the home itself and, and the layout. And so that's really cool. 
Lots of uh, interesting kitchens there. We'll look at some more of these in a second, but let's just jump in to the chat uh, for a little bit. And um, and Jackie's saying there's a sync question in the chat. Where is it at? Jackie, are you able to star those questions? If you are, or uh, we'll try to find them. I'll try to find them. Uh, let's see. Well, if there is a sync question, my apologies. I missed you. Give me your sync question again. Oh, okay, I can try. But Edward asked, could you give some feedback about the pros and cons of different kinds of sinks at some point? I did um, talk about sinks before in a few videos. I've four specific videos just on the topic of sinks, placement, style, um, you know, material, and and another one. I can't remember exactly what it was, where I talk about um, different different kinds of sinks. It kind, kind of comes down to what you prefer. Like, I prefer a large single, like everyone, most people know. Um, that That's my kind of go-to. I've had sink and a has. I've had... Um, you know, double sinks, and I, I really prefer a large single. However, you can't start them. Okay, that's cool. Um, it comes down to preference, what you like, what you're used to. And, you know, now that I've had a large single, that's I wouldn't go back to a double or anything else. I think it's the very best type of sink. But also, um, yeah, put a bunch of cues, in fact, in a row, if you want, uh, for a question. Or... Um, if you super chat the question, I'll prioritize it uh, over everybody else's. So um, just that's another way to do it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I like the workstation sinks. Um, I really like those. And they, they come, you know, in singles or doubles, all kinds of different styles. But yeah, so I do have some videos on the channel about that, uh, Edward. And um, but overall, just as a blanket statement, I just prefer large singles o over anything else. Um, you know, that's just my go-to. And, you know, and you can say, well, and there's pros and cons to that as well. Like if, if, if you are someone who fills up your sink to, to use it, to do dishes and, and whatnot, then that wouldn't maybe be a good idea because you're just filling up a huge bowl. Whereas like we don't do that particularly. Um, we don't, we don't fill up our sink. So I, I don't need to have, I don't need to have that division, but if you do, then that would be a good idea. And yeah, Bluebell is saying, oops, um, you're welcome. Um, oh, I, <laughs> thanks, Rose. I'll look at yours in a second. Uh, yeah, Bluebell is saying she loves her workstation sink. So that's another one uh, that's that's really, uh, really popular. There's so many varieties in workstation sinks that are out there. And there's a lot of different price points as well, but they're really good. Hello, Mar Mary Margaret. Um, I won't attempt your laugh, last name, but thank you so much for joining and watching. I do appreciate it. Um, and let's see. Yeah. Does a large single take a long time to fill in washing dishes? Yeah. Yes. It would take forever to, to fill. I would never want to fill my large single to wash dishes. So if that's something you're into doing, I would not do that. Um, so yeah. So that's how. You, so that's where you need to know, like your your particular thing, how you use things. Hey, Phil, Mark, interior design tip: don't do essential gray from Sherman Sherman Sherwin Williams for wall paint. It looks like dark purple in direct natural light. Hmm, interesting. I wonder if they mixed it wrong, if they tinted it wrong. That's a possibility. And uh, this is also a really good point too: is that y you always should get um, a sample of your paint in your home first. It's not always possible. And how are you going to know what it looks like on a whole wall? I know, but, and I'm not saying the Phil didn't do this. I'm just saying that that's always a good idea uh, to, get, to take that home. As, as well as countertop samples, doors, anything like that, that's going to be in your home. Take them home to your light, to your room, to see what, they, um, what they're going to look like. And I would say that, yeah, either it, it looks like dark purple or it's it's tinted wrong maybe yeah no undertones in gray are hard to get down well i don't i'm not a paint expert but i believe you so be careful with that particular color if you're out there dish pan 
can save water on large single sinks. Yeah, so if you have a large single bowl, you get a little dish pan. Jeff, that's a really great idea. And I, I still, we still just don't fill up for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I, I shouldn't say that. Sometimes we do use a big, like a, you know, a big bowl, like a mixing bowl, uh, because the girls use a lot for soap making. So they get put in the sink a lot and that does come in pretty handy. So yeah. One regret I have is skipping a farm sink. I wish I had my, I wish my sink had more space behind the faucet. And a farm sink gives you that. It does because it just comes out. It comes out so far. It gives you probably three inches, maybe more than that behind there. So that's good. That's a good tip. Uh, our sink, you know, it just the faucet and that's really it. You, don't, you just have a little narrow strip, strip behind that. So that's really important to know too when you're looking at sinks. I've been looking at 12 by 12. Um, and... 12 by 12 should give you a good idea on paint. Paint's a, a tricky one. What I'm going to attempt to do, um, and, and Nick might be able to help me with this, uh, I'm going to see if I can get James from the paint people on and have an interview with him. Um, that'd be kind of fun. We can talk about painting cabinets and kitchens and all that other kind of paint-related stuff. So always cool to have experts on that, that know stuff like that. Um in, in their particular field, it makes a really interesting conversation overall. And I think it's valuable to, to anyone viewing. So, and if well, let's go to the poll for a minute, let's see how things are going. I don't know. I guess you can't vote if you're watching on Facebook, but thank you. If you are watching on Facebook and please leave a thumbs up wherever you can and whenever you can. But the poll is, um, is your kitchen. My kitchen is a social hub of the house and a true or false true. It's party central kitchen, party central, or false state of my kitchen. So far, 70% of you uh, are saying the kitchen is that social hub in the house that uh, everyone um, gathers in. So Rose is saying that James is awesome. Everyone loves James. So I'm going to try to reach out to him. I'll do it this week. Remember the last time I said, hey, I'm going to reach out to Nick Lewis. And, and we did it. And uh, that was awesome. We'll do the same thing with James. We'll see if we can get him on. And um, he seems like a super cool guy. And Nick, knows him and says he's a super cool guy. So, hey, you never know. That'd be fun. Okay. Yeah, that is a really valuable tip. Whatever you're going to put in your home, make sure you get it to your home first um, beforehand. Yeah, so you can see it in your natural light. And because um, it always looks different in the store under fluorescence and uh, than it does in your home. So, Mm -hmm. I totally agree. It was a great live stream and um, I'm sure he'll come back on sometime. All right. Let's go back to our, um, our AD special here and we'll, uh, we'll see what we can um, we'll bring up something else. So far, I'm not super impressed. I'm sorry. I didn't look at any of these. So I, uh, I wanted it to be a surprise for all of us which I just find more interesting than uh, me going through it. Let's go, let's do 10 questions to ask yourself before your kitchen remodel. Let's do that one. Let's see if we can get a win here with 10 questions to ask yourself before your kitchen remodel. Here we go. Kitchen renovation prep. 10 questions to ask yourself before your kitchen remodel. Question number one, what is your objective? <laughs> I want a new kitchen. That's my objective. My my kit, my current kitchen doesn't have any countertop space and it looks horrible. It's falling off the wall. You know, that's my objective. Be clear about your ultimate goal will help your contractor and yourself. Focus on what matters, whether it's a lasting solutions that will turn your kitchen into an efficient workhorse or less costly design enhancements that will help you land a good price. I mean, yeah, obviously you got to know what you're intending to do. Are you designing this kitchen so that many people can work in it? Are you designing it just to be kind of more of a showpiece because you're not in the kitchen a whole lot? And those are all good things to know. How long do you plan to live in the home? This is important because you don't want to renovate a kitchen for someone else necessarily you want to renovate it for yourself and so if you haven't that understanding then um then i would say that would be uh, a very good a very good question to ask yourself how long do i stand, plan on staying here 
Ask yourself this question. Do I have any children? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, uh, that's a that's a great question to ask yourself before doing a kitchen renovation. <laughs> oh my word. That's great. <laughs> I don't even want to continue with that one. Uh, that's just funny. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Ask yourself if you have children. Because if you have children, then you, you have to design it with those little people in mind. All right. Do you have any allergies and health issues to consider? Um, this is a kind of a good one that doesn't get that doesn't get asked enough. I don't think if someone in your family suffers from asthma or other breathing breathing issues, let your contractor know. Um, things that are important to stay away from, if you do have any of those, are high gloss lacquers and urea from and phenol formaldehydes, which are used in adhesives in most plywood plywoods. Daddio says, "Oh, who's Daddio? I like that name. Imagine if your last name was Daddio. <laughs> That's great. Oh, who's Daddio? Sorry, I just got. Oh, Mike Daddio." Mike, I love your last name. Yeah, so that's, um, I just, squirrel, um, if you have allergies. I ran into this before with a kitchen renovation where the client had allergies to the urea formaldehyde in, that was in malamine that the cabinets, uh, that was in the actual cabinet boxes themselves. And um, they had to replace the whole thing. It came down to that. And it was kind of back in the day when it was like, oh, you don't have an allergy. What are you talking about? Like, that doesn't even exist. That's not even a thing. Like, we're talking like, you know, over a decade ago. And it wasn't really at the forefront or wasn't really known about that much. <clears throat> and, like, the lady had to basically convince us convince us that um, it was a thing and that she wasn't just making this up. So she had all plywood or what, some, what, something else in her kitchen. So there you go. It's a good question to ask, honestly. Ask yourself if you have any allergies. If you have kids, ask yourself that. And if you have allergies, ask yourself, will you be living in your home during the renovation? Mm. Yes. Um, figure that out for sure, because that can get really tricky. We did a kitchen renovation before uh, Amy and I in a previous home, and we were able to move out. We moved into my parents' house while they were um, in in down south vacationing. And, and, and that was really, really valuable because living in the midst of a kitchen renovation can be really taxing. Some of you know this for sure already. Some of you do this, um, have done this in the past, and it, it can be really taxing on everyone when you don't have a sink or whatever. So we brought this up before, but leave your sink till the last if you can. And Ikea has a really great, it's not that expensive. I don't know the total amount, but it's, it's really not that expensive. This kind of like kitchen set that you can, um, you know, temporary little kitchen set that you can use if that happens to be your situation. So you're not using your vanity sink or your, or your bathtub to like clean your, your dishes because that can get annoying. And kitchen renovations can run long. And and so it's it's a good question to ask whether or not you're going to be in that space during that uh, that time frame. Okay, let's, let's just leave it there for a second and jump over because I see a question and I want to get to it, okay? Let's do our best here. Um, and if hopefully um, I see a few. So uh, Edward, I'm asking mostly about the pros and cons of different materials. Oh, stainless versus granite uh, sink materials. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't. I do have. I don't know if there's. I have a pro or con. I think. Uh, um, I think Jeff just did a video on on his channel, Homestead Studios on uh, different materials, I think, as one of his recent videos. I, I prefer, I like stainless steel. It's just one of my favorites, but I'm not, a, I've had granite in the past. It was great as well. I know my parents have a granite one, a white granite one, like a sill granite, like Blanco style. And, you know, it's fabulous. I, I've had both and I like, I like stainless steel. Um, if you're filling up a tub with hot water, uh, you know, a sink tub with hot water, granite seems to hold the temperature better and stainless dissipates it a little faster. So if that's a thing that's important, then maybe, um, you know, I don't, I, other than that, I can't really, I, I don't know what other, off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but I like to go with, um, with stainless. I am on the side of a functional spacious kitchen with one big single sink, loved washing plates, and whatnot love to cook 
Asian and all kinds of cuisines. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. I like that. I love, I don't love to cook, but I love to eat. <laughs> so that's important. Amy likes cooking a lot. And uh, I love eating what Amy cooks. So that's always good. <laughs> Do you have any children? It's a question you ask about everything. Yeah. Like if you're going to vacation, ask your, uh, ask yourself that. Isn't daddy -o that cake guy? I have no idea, but I just, that's just the greatest last name. Okay. So many. Um, any other questions? All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And we'll jump back in. All right. Question to ask yourself, what is your budget? Yeah, you want to find out what's in your bank account and what's allotted for that kitchen renovation. 10 to 20% contingency, I would say, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Kitchen renovations cost a, a whole lot of money. People ask me what, how much does a kitchen cost or how much does a renovation cost? And the, the truth is there's no, uh, there's no one answer for that. It, it comes down to a lot of variables. But you got to know what your your budget is, and you should you should plan out um, you should plan out that first before you get renderings and before you get all that. Uh, <clears throat> it's really important to do that so that you don't get disappointed later on down the road when you get this beautiful kitchen rendering and design and all this stuff, and then realize I can't afford that. And you got to start cutting corners and doing things to make it work. Uh, you know, make sure you know what you're um, what you're up against before beforehand yeah so why yay i made it to alive awesome thanks for being here i made it too oh there goes my camera maybe i'm gone all right appreciate everyone who jumps on if it's for a few minutes or if you stay the whole time or if you watch a replay thanks so much for being on the live stream what's the next question you should ask yourself aside from do i have any kids what have people in similar homes accomplished what have been their limitations? Hmm. That's, uh, I don't think about that at all. I've never asked myself that. I just look at the space and be like, okay, this is what we can do. Let's do it. Um, yeah. Zoning laws. Oh, yeah. Landmark preservation rules, yard setbacks. I guess so. But usually if you're doing like just a kitchen rental, do you have to worry about all that stuff? Do you have to let me know where you live? Do you need to have a permit to do a kitchen renovation? Hmm. And if so, did you get one? Can you remove that wall? Oh, question to ask yourself. This is a great question. Can you remove that wall to open up the kitchen? That is a great question. I do agree. Do I have any kids? And can I get rid of that wall? <laughs> can I can I can I use my kids to help me get rid of that wall? That's a great question. Um, especially for me, every home that I've purchased, every home we moved into, we tear down walls and I love tearing down walls and just making the space open. It's just what I prefer. I like having an open kitchen, open space. And uh, oftentimes with clients, when we look at the kitchen and I go and visit their home when that was, a, when I was doing that and you know, we look at the space, always that would come up. Can, can we take this wall down? The, the answer is always yes. There's always a way to make that happen, in my opinion. Even if it's load-bearing, there's a way to do it. So definitely, definitely take the walls down. Open it up. I'm still a fan of open concept. I, I just love it. So, you know, I'm not into the closed-off kitchen thing. You know, that's not my, my thing. I love an open kitchen. So if the wall can come down, bring it down. Now, it, <laughs> if, if it's your only wall and there's no other place to put appliances... Maybe that's not the right decision, but otherwise, if, if it can come down, take it down. Okay. Sound advice from Mark Tobin, Kitchen Design. And the next question is, what's behind those walls? Before you tear it down, make sure that you know what's behind it. Maybe there's a living room back there. Uh, no. Is there anything in the wall, I guess is what they're trying to say. Is there anything in that wall that is going to be important that if you tear it down, you know, uh, you're going to damage something. Uh, so you want to make sure that you have that figured out. Normally stuff can be rerouted. 
you know, that's not a big deal, especially if it's electrical, that can all be rerun somewhere. And even plumbing it usually comes up through the floor and that sometimes can be dealt with. So, ah, good question. All right. What's the next one? Ask yourself this final question. When can we get started? <laughs> oh my gosh. I always say that a well-planned project is a well-executed executed project. I agree, Daddy-O. Take that time to properly plan everything that you're doing. Yeah, when can we get started? It's so exciting. You want to make sure that you don't jump the gun. Make sure that you have your ducks lined up and that you have your T's dotted and your I's crossed. Make sure you have that all happening before you, you get into it so that you don't get into a mess. But um, these are pretty good questions. I love, I love, uh, I love number three. Do we have any children? Ask yourself that every time you're going to do a kitchen renovation. My, my children are growing. So each kitchen renovation is changed in relation to what we use it for with the kids. Like we, we did a little bit of uh, reminiscing the other day on a YouTube channel that we have that's just like a bunch of family stuff. And one of uh, the videos is my daughter's making cupcakes and it's in one of our old kitchens. And that, that island was used for that purpose, it had seating on both sides. It was a main you know, area of that kitchen. And so that was really great. But now as the kids are older, that, that you know, the cupcake thing doesn't happen as often. Uh, and so the island is used for different things now than it used to be. So things change as the kids grow. And um, so, you know, that's always something that happens. And I would say, like, if you don't make sure you incorporate things, like make sure you, I don't. Hmm, here's the best way to say this. Um, don't design your kitchen around your kids. They're going to grow up and move out. So if you plan on staying there, make sure the kitchen functions for you for the long haul. And it's, you know. So in other words, don't think that because you have little kids, you need to put in lower seating because um, they grow fast and then all that seating is obsolete. So think about that when you're when you're designing your kitchen as well. And you're asking yourself whether or not I have kids. And uh, yeah, thanks for the feedback. It was very helpful. Thanks. I hope I hope I hope it, it, it was. I hope that I can be helpful. Soffits need to come out too. Yep. Soffits should always come out. Make sure that you check and see what's up in there. Usually there's nothing. People think there's stuff in there, but usually there's just not. Um, I did a few designs for, for clients and they, and I, they send me pictures in their soffit and be like, well, what's in that soffit? And they're like, oh, there's, there's ventilation. There's all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I, don't, I don't see any, any registers. I don't see anything. And there's no lights. You sure? Like, just take a look. Just pop your head in there. Pop a hole. You can always patch it. And uh, sure enough, yeah, there's nothing in there. Mark, did you ever watch the show Homes on Homes? Good Canadian building show. Learn a lot about kitchens. Yeah, Mike Holmes. He's like the he's like the, the Canadian contractor icon. Yeah, I used to watch. I've watched him before. Yeah. A lot of great shows out there. Remember that a contractor who writes a short estimate will add on extras at the back end. It's often safer to go with someone who spells out everything out in excruciating detail. Yeah, it is, but there's always going to be something on the back end that you don't you don't didn't foresee. But uh, I know what you meant. But yeah, that's that is good. Make sure you get as much detail as possible. Question: What do you think about people designers replacing islands with dining table? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, if, if it works, it works. Like I, for me, the island's twofold. It's storage and, and that type of, ex, you know, function and a surface and you can incorporate seating on it. Um, and that being said, I, I did two kitchens and for ourselves that had seating on both sides. And so it basically was like a dining table but it also had all the functions of an island with drawer banks and stuff like that. I mean, if it fits the kitchen and it's the right choice for the family, like, sure, I guess so. But probably generally overall, I'd say probably not. I'd like the island to be functional more than just a surface. But that's a good question to ask yourself if you're going to do a kitchen design. Um, I presented a complete scope of work to the contractor who showed up for estimates and still had trouble with the contractor. 
<gasps> yeah. <laughs> it's too bad. But that, I, I know. I know that happens so much. Uh, we always roll with them no matter what. Uh, I know. It just happens. Because you don't have Mike Holmes on the job, you know? And uh, I don't know. I don't know why that happens so often, but it's like, Bluebell, you're not alone. It happens a lot. And um, I'm not sure why. If you're a contractor out there, why does that type of thing happen? You have to you have you have a sore back when rolling out of pie crust. Oh, that's true too. The height's different. So if if you're gonna put a, a dining table in, it's lower. So that wouldn't that wouldn't maybe work that well. Unless it's one of those pub style things, but then you're just getting into something completely different. All right. I remember my mom being sold and replacing the kitchen table with a new concept, an island for prep work. Yeah, and now I mean most kitchens just have both. You have an island and you have uh uh, you know, dining table. My experience planning for a healthier back with different height surfaces. You want to make sure even a regular 36 inch high countertop can be kind of low for some people. And I've had a lot of people ask, can we raise or some people ask, can we lower? And uh, that's something that you should be looking at as well. If uh, you're doing a kitchen design and that's a, a concern. And I mean, I just did a design for someone who wanted the cabinets lowered um, the wall cabinets lowered a little bit, which, which we did. I mean, do I recommend that? Not, no, I don't recommend that, but it's not my kitchen and you have to be able to deal with that and know the consequences of that, which they do and we're okay with. And so perfect. Um, but if they don't, you know, and they're lower, that can be an issue. So, th I mean, it's all things that you have to uh, consider. Oh, from Mark Fredericks. Thanks, Jackie, for staying on top of that. Mark Fredericks, Mark, which type of wood countertop do you think looks best with black cabinets? Which type of wood? Oh, oh, oak, natural oak. Natural oak, I think, looks amazing. Um, yeah. With black cabinets, natural oak. Thanks, Jackie. Um, that would be my uh, my go-to. But not with necessary with white cabinets. I'd go with a natural maple if it was white cabinets. And I don't, I mean, that's just me. Thinking about a shallower sink because my husband gets thrown back when we're washing dishes. Uh, get him a dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Like some of those, some sinks are 10 inches deep. My sink is, I think 10 inches, it might be nine. No, I think it's 10. It's pretty deep sink. Um, but yeah. That's definitely a thing. I think you can get seven inch deep sinks if I if I am correct. Um, and he still he still might complain of back pain if he's doing them dishes. So you better watch him. Maybe it has nothing to do with the sink depth at all. Might be just trying to get out of a chore. Hey, Mavis showed up. Hey, Mavis, glad you made it. Um, we're pulling on an hour, so I want to thank everyone. We're going to jump off a little bit early. Um, yeah, raised dishwasher, Sarah. Sarah knows. Uh, my sink is nine inches. Yes. I think mine's a 10, but I like it. Are there dishwashers that you can put on your counter? Not that I've seen, but I have seen um, one that's a top. Maybe this is a, maybe this is what you're talking about. A top loading one. So it's built in, you know, to the counter surface in, in actually into a sink I seen one of those before so that you're not, you know, coming down underneath. Um, but it is built down into. So, yes, I guess that's a, a yes for that. And I've also seen a drawer style uh, dishwasher that pulls out. So those are things that you can get so that you don't have to, um, to you know, to, to, to bend down or whatnot. So or what Sarah is saying here about raising a dishwasher. That's a thing. Normally, I'm not a super fan of a raised dishwasher. However, when it comes to usability um it's a really great choice and so um th that's one thing you can consider um is a raised dishwasher so but you just have to plan for how that's going to look and, and plan that so as long as you do that you're fine hmm. okay where are we at oh 
Ooh. If you had to outline the steps of a complete remodel from start to finish, what would they be? That is a long answer. That sounds like a great video um, that, that I should do. That's a great topic. Outline the steps of a complete remodel. Let me let me uh, let me work that out. That's I don't, I'd have to do that one justice by actually planning that one out and thinking about it. Um, but first step is just getting ideas and you know getting a getting a bunch of layouts for the space, a whole bunch of layouts, at least two <laughs> or three. Get a few different design concepts um, so that you can see what's possible in the space and have a designer do it like not not yourself have someone with fresh eyes go in and look at your space and and do do different things things that doesn't even matter if they're makes perfect sense or not but just so you can see how things would work out that'd be the good first step from there there's probably a whole bunch of things you should do in particular order but if you don't start off with a whole bunch of layouts and a whole bunch of design ideas then it can you can sometimes get pigeonholed into a layout um because that's no one thought to just explore the options. So I don't know if that doesn't really answer your question, but that would that's at least where I would start with that one. That's a great question, though. Um, hey, you know what? Let's talk about this one here. <sighs> I put my toddler on the counter to wash his sippy cups. Does that count as a tabletop dishwasher? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it does. You put them right in the sink. Yeah, yes, they are. Oh, wait, no. Here in the U.S., we have those that go on the counter. They're portable countertop dishwashers. Cool, Jackie. Jackie for the win. I didn't know that. I've never seen those before, but I've seen the ones that you can go down, you can go down into um, in a sink. Awesome. And of course, there's portable dishwashers, but awesome. The other son would be ripping pages out of books. He's a writer. Oh, I missed some other thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. Check out Natural Oak. It looks it looks cool, in my opinion. It's, you know, I mean, it all comes down to what you like, but I think it looks great. Uh, and oak is something that was very popular years ago and kind of, you know, fell out of vogue and it's coming back now. Um, but I just like the look of oak. It's really beautiful. <laughs> He's slow as your AOL. He's on the MySpace, Phil. Here we go. Do you think non-white kitchen and the more natural tones and colors going to be here to stay for the long time? Or will this get dated? I think, um, oh, non-white kitchens and more natural tones. Ah, I, I mean, the, col the color of the year changes every year. So, of course, that's going to change this because, you know, your blue kitchen is no longer the hot trending thing that it was in 2018 or 2016 or whenever blue was popular. Now it's going to be green or now it's going to be some other color. And in a few years, it'll be something else. Um, so no, I don't think it's going to, I think this, I think the concept is going to stay forever, but the particular color is not going to stay forever. So yeah, I guess I think non-white kitchens and more neutral tones or natural tones uh, are going to be here for a long time. What will get dated is the particular color that you use. And that's why I think like white with wood probably won't get, you know, too, too dated, but I don't know. I'm also not an interior designer. And that's kind of my opinion. So, but as a kitchen designer, that would be my kind of my thought about that. <laughs> Phil's, uh, I don't, Phil, I don't know what you're talking about now. <laughs> Just like my '90s internet, he stops working when I get on the phone. Um, you can always kind of feel to be talking about something. I'm sorry, that has nothing to do with kitchen renovations. It's okay. It's all good. It's all, all good. Oh, the hardware styles will get dated. Yeah, hardware styles do get dated. That would be the one thing. That's why you have to be careful which hardware you go with in terms of center to center drilling spaces so that you can pick something later on down the road that you can replace with ease and not try to have to be finding something that fits those holes um, and not being able to come up with something. So 
Hope that makes sense. Listen, I missed a ton of these chats uh, today, um, but hopefully you're helping each other out, and I do appreciate it. Um, we're going to take off, but I want to just say again, I know I mentioned this last week, but Eva Sopko right there, um, we're in, we, we got 250 of these today. <laughs> so it's things are getting real. Um, so that's fun. We have, uh, this is what, this is the uh, cream shampoo. This is my wife and daughter's uh, soap company, all natural soap company. And, um, we're launching this working on websites. So I was taking product photography today here in the studio and uh, learning all kinds of stuff. This is the Better Body Butter Bar. Better, better Body Butter Bar. Uh, mm, lemongrass, beautiful. This is a, a body butter bar. They have all kinds of different products. Why am I mentioning this? Well, because they are really awesome. Someone asked me if I ship to the US. The answer is, I think so. Hope so. That would make the most sense. The chapstick, uh, lip balm, sorry, not chapstick. The lip balm is really good. And I'm going to tell you this. We don't have any labeling for this yet, but this is the deodorant stick. It's absolutely incredible i'm telling you i wear it to crossfit in the mornings it's unbelievable how good this is and there's there's no crud in it that's gonna get in your bloodstream and hurt you so um why am i mentioning this is because you're gonna i'm gonna start to promote it a little bit um over time so this is just an, a company that my, my wife and daughter are starting so that they can uh, just sell some natural products because they have a real um they have a real love for it. And uh, so it has nothing to do with kitchens, but it has to do with uh, my family. So I'm going to mention here in the live stream, I'm not going to mention it on videos yet until we get the website up and running and then they can become a sponsor to my channel. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, so yeah, really great products. And yes, I hope to ship to the U S we're working on all that stuff as we go. So um, it's really cool. Eva means life giving. So that's what her name means. And it's our middle daughter. And so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Really, really great stuff. All the products are really, really cool. Really amazing. I'm not saying that because I'm, you know, married to this project. I'm telling you, this deodorant is like nothing I've ever used. I, I'm, and I'm not being facetious. I'm, it's unbelievable. And it is a tongue twister. We did a little, uh, you can go to Eva underscore soap underscore co underscore on Instagram. You know, I try to say that five times fast. Better body butter bar. And it's kind of fun, fun to say. Smells amazing. The dry shampoo, the, the 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 dry shampoo is amazing. All right, that's all I want to say about that. So thanks so much for watching. Again, if you haven't watched the Nick Lewis interview, please check that out on the channel. And I'm going to try to make that a little easier to view in terms of chapters or or making that um, you know into a video. Hit the like button on your way out before you go. Thanks for being here on a Wednesday night or Thursday morning, Helen. I seen you on there. I didn't say hi yet, but thanks for watching from Australia and others who are in Australia. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Just hanging out with me on Wednesday night. Uh, the Facebook crew, thanks for being here on Facebook. And I'm trying to get more into Facebook, uh, but, um, you know, it's a slow process, the, the, the Facebook, but uh, I'm working on it. And um, what's, what's Phil saying? Your kids are married to the project. Mark, it, if it's if it's your wife, okay, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Good night, everyone. Have a great rest of your week and uh, this week. And I'm, what's my video on this weekend? I'm talking about oh, some kitchen trends, just a good old fashioned kitchen trends, trends that I like. So I'm just. Not not trends that are just out there, but actual ones that I actually like and uh, why I like them. So just an interesting video. Hopefully you like it. Uh, my video from last week, of course, was about me redesigning a kitchen that three other interior designers designed. That was really fun to do and hope to do more of those in the future. So have a great week. God bless.